Hey there, welcome back. We are cloning Pop the Log game. And if you remember last time we have completed the anchored motor and the dot detection system. Uh, so today let's explore something more. Now, instead of these debug logs, we should do something. When the player misses the dot, we should show the game over screen. And if they score, then we need to spawn a new dot and increment the score and do some other stuff. But rather than hard coding everything in this file, let's explore the use of event-driven design in this game. So let's say when you score a dot, you want to do something like update the UI. So the way we do this traditionally is to keep a reference to the text UI and update it when we score. But then later you decided to change the camera's background color. So you add a reference to the camera and do the same thing. And this keeps on growing and gets crazy complicated. And also if someday you decided to remove that text UI, then your game breaks. And also a designer cannot just come in and experiment with new effects without changing the code. Now consider this option. Instead of having these hard references, we can raise events like dot scored or dot missed. And objects can subscribe to these events and when they're raised, they'll just do their stuff. And this gives us a very clear separation of concerns because your publishers raise an event and they don't care what happens after that. And your subscribers respond to those events without worrying about where it came from. And this kind of design scales pretty well because there is no hard reference between your game objects so you can freely remove any of these without breaking the game and your designers or even you as a designer can come in and listen for any event and do stuff without messing with your code. Now there are many ways to implement an event system. Uh, you could use C sharp delegates and events, but I think combining the scriptable objects and unity events create the best kind of event system in my opinion. So let's create a folder for our new event system. And also let me just move the text mesh pro to a separate folder called third party. I'll create a new script called game event. And this will be a scriptable object, not a mono behavior. And here we'll keep a list of event listeners, which we'll define soon. And these event listeners are just subscribers that will respond to some game event. Let's also create this event listener class. I'll just create it here for now. And then we can create a public method called raise. And this is what we'll call from other classes to raise this event. And inside this, we can just loop through all our event listeners and call some public method on it. We also need some methods to register and deregister the event listeners. And this just adds the new listener to our list if it's not already there. And the deregister does the opposite. Let's move this event listener class to a new script. And this class will be a mono behavior, not a scriptable object. And we'll write a public method, let's say on event raised, which will be called by the game event inside the raise method. Let's also use unity event variable called response that will allow us to drag and drop methods in the inspector. And of course we need the game event variable to know which event this listener should respond to. Now to register this game event inside the onEnable method, we'll call the event register method with itself and do the opposite in onDisable. And inside the on event raised, we can invoke the unity event called response. Also, in order to create assets from scriptable objects, we need to stick this create asset menu attribute on the game event class. The event system is complete now, but it would be great to have some kind of custom editor and a button that can raise the event for debugging. And this kind of editor scripts can improve our testing workflow. So I highly recommend you make these kind of editor tooling for your game as well. So let's create a new editor script called game event editor. And here I'm just gonna get the game event instance as target and also create a button called raise. And finally raise the game event if we press it in play mode. And that's it. As you can see, we can now create game events from the menu. And let's create our first event called dot missed event. And you can see this also has this raise button, which will be active in the play mode. So we have our game events. Now we need some listeners. For this, let's go to a paddle object and add the event listener component we just created. And that is the reason why we made this a mono behavior because we wanted to attach that to any game object. 
and this takes in the game event as a variable so let's drop the new event we just created and now you can see that we can add methods using the unity event that we added to the class and this is one of the benefits of using unity event as a response uh, because you can just serialize all your method calls and you cannot do this kind of effect if you're using native c sharp delegates or events okay but before we start adding the response let's raise this event first so i'll go back to the dot detector script where we are checking for game over and here we need to raise the dot missed event so let's create a public game event variable called miss dot event and in the collision check we can just raise this and i'll just rename it to dot missed event and while we are here let's also raise the dot scored event when the player successfully taps on the dot great now we are raising events but we need someone to respond to these events as well so let's start small if you see the original game the center remaining dots ui changes when we score the dot so to design this with our event system let's create a new component called score updater and here we add a public method called decrement dots and a variable for remaining dots and inside this method we decrease the dots and also don't let the score become negative and we also need to have the text that we want to update so i'll keep a variable for that and inside the start method we'll just cache this component and in update we just set the text to remaining dot let's create the dot scored event as well and drop both events on our dot detector script in the correct fields now the remaining dots ui wants to know when the dot is scored so i'll add the event listener component here and i'll drop the dot scored event here because this is the event that this component is interested in as for the response i'll just drag the same object and choose the score updater decrement dots that's it so if you play you can see that the raise button in the editor is active because of the script that we made and if we click this raise button the dot scored event is raised and since our remaining dot ui is listening for this event it's doing its own thing and updating the ui and that's why these kind of editor scripts are so helpful because you don't have to play the entire game just to test a small thing out you can just raise the event and see the effect okay hopefully you have a basic understanding of how this thing works so let's try to do something more complex with this event system let's create the lose animation so on the parent lock object let's add an animator component and i'll create a new animation called lose animation looking at the original game when you lose the lock shakes and wobbles a bit so we'll add some shake and maybe smooth it out a bit Now in the animator currently the lose animation is the default which is not what we want so I'll create a default idle state and make a transition with a trigger called do animation to run this animation and we can also add a transition back when the frame ends and once we are happy with the animation I'll go back to the lock object now the lock must listen for the lose event so i'll add a new event listener that will listen for the dot missed event and i'll again drag the same object and choose animator set trigger method and pass in the trigger name one thing i want to point out here is that in this unity event response you can drag in any object from your project but i never do that because that creates a strong coupling with this object and if you remove that other thing which you are dragging from the scene your game will break and that's why i only drag the same object and use its public method now when we play and raise our dot scored event the lock responds to our events and shakes and that's it we just added a new effect tested it as much as we wanted without actually playing the game and to be honest we don't even have the play logic implemented yet but this kind of flexible event system and the editor tooling allows us to test different systems in isolation which is quite useful let's now make the screen turn red when the player misses the dot we can do this by changing the camera's background so on the camera i'll again add an event listener that listens for the dot missed event and i'll drop the camera object and choose some public method 
but the camera component surprisingly does not have any way to change the background color. So let's quickly create a very small component called color manager and which exposes some public methods. And this class will keep the camera as a variable and we'll cache the camera component in the start. And also we'll keep a color variable for the loose color and I'll create a public method called, uh, let's say change to loose color. And here we just set the camera's background color to the loose color. We can also keep the original color in the variable called start color. And when the game loads, we set the camera's background color to the start color. I'm thinking we also might need a method to change back to the start color. So I'll create that. Let's now assign our colors in the inspector. And you can see the start color script works just fine. Now coming back to the event listener, we can now drag the camera and use the change to lose color method from our color manager component when the event is raised. Hit play and there. We now have a red screen when the player misses a dot. Let's organize a bit. Move our events to the events folder and animations to the animations folder and maybe rename the events to make more sense. And also this dot detector variables can be named on dot missed and on dot scored. I think it makes more sense. Now for the final effect, let's create the win animation. So let's first create a new game event called win event. And we would like the lock to slide off the screen when the win event is raised. And so on the parent lock object, let's add one more event listener, which listens for the win event. And when this event is raised, let's drag the animator and choose set trigger again. And this time let's call a new trigger, say do win animation. Let's go back to the animator and I'll create a new trigger called do win animation. Also create the new win state and create a transition that uses our trigger. We'll also create a new animation clip called win animation. And just delete the junk animation state. And also make sure that the animation doesn't loop. And I'll make a transition back to idle so we can go back to the idle state when the animation finishes. Now for the animation itself, we'll first, let's say, open the lock hat. So I'll use the position property and move it up a bit. And let's also put a small movement in the opposite direction. It looks springy. And then we'll just move the whole object off screen after some frames. Like that. And maybe add an offshoot again in the opposite direction. Uh, maybe try different easing. So this is all good, but in the actual game, the lock slides off on one side and then comes back from the other side. So you could do this in many ways, but uh, I'll just use a different state approach. So we can have one more state that runs right after the win state. Let's call this slide in. And we'll transition from win to this slide in. And then transition back to the idle like that. Currently there is nothing in the slide animation, so we don't see anything. So let's now create the slide in animation and drop it in our state. Adjust the settings maybe. And for the animation, it will be quite simple. I'll use the transform and for the first keyframe, I'll put the object off screen and then the last keyframe brings it back in. Let's test it. Yeah, this looks close enough. And maybe in my win animation, add some hold frames to make the transition longer. Okay, now for the final judgment. So we already have the event listener in place. So let's hit play and raise the event. And it works. When the win event is raised, we slide the lock off and then back in.
So I think we have completed the event system and I have also given you some of the examples of how we can use it. I think this event system can be a bit confusing and it's a lot to process. So let's take a break here. And next time let's continue and try to implement something more. So yeah, that's it for today. It was fun making this video. I hope you learned something new. So see you next time. Cheers.